I'm sure you've all seen the recent influx of Leica content from our favorite YouTubers. Now let's be real, most of us either don't think it's a good idea to spend $6,000 on a point and shoot camera, or we just flat out can't afford it. Now I know guys like Peter McKinnon and Matty Hipoya, they can obviously afford this camera. It's probably just a drop in the bucket for them, but I'd like to think that they're not completely reckless with their money. So why are they pushing a $6,000 camera to all of us? After giving it some thought, I think it comes down to needing a little inspiration. Now, as I'm sure a lot of you know, it's really easy to get stuck in a creative rut when you're trying to create content day in, day out, every single day. And guys like Peter and Maddie are obviously not immune to this, neither am I. I know that we all draw in creativity from different places, but I think the vast majority of us will agree that there are certain pieces of gear that can inspire us to go out there and shoot. And I think that's where the Leica comes in. I'm sure that shooting with a beautifully made camera like a Leica is a super fun and inspirational experience, but I don't think that Leica has a monopoly on inspiration. If you've watched any of my other videos, then you already know that I'm heavily into the Sony ecosystem and you know that I love my Sony a7C. I even did a whole video about how I think this is the most underrated Sony mirrorless camera of all time. So if you want to check that out, I'll link it up here and down below in the description. I like to shoot a lot of street photography, so I highly value a camera that's small, light, discreet, and beautiful. So for my Leica killer build, I'm going to use the a7C as the platform to start from. Sure, the Q2 does have more megapixels than the a7C, but it also has a fixed lens with a focal length of 28 millimeters. My favorite all-time focal lengths for shooting street photography are 35 millimeters and 50 millimeters. Now the Q2 can get you these effective focal lengths by cropping in on the sensor, but when you crop into 35 millimeters, you're only using 30 megapixels of the Q2 sensor. And when you crop into 50 millimeters, you're only using 15 megapixels of the sensor. Now, obviously with the a7C, I'm allowed to swap lenses, which means that I can use 35, 50, whatever focal length I want and take full advantage of the 24 megapixels of the a7C sensor. So knowing that, I'm gonna call it a wash between the Q2 and the a7C in terms of resolution, only because I can swap lenses on this and always use 24 megapixels. And the Leica, while it does have more megapixels than the a7C, to get the focal lengths that I would use, I would have to crop in on the sensor, therefore not giving me as many pixels to use. So I'm gonna call it a wash. Now when it comes to color science, I have a lot of faith in my Lightroom and Photoshop skills that I can emulate pretty much any camera's color science out there. So I'm not too worried about the color science and I think I can take care of that in post. Especially because I shoot raw, which you should be shooting raw if you're not already doing that. Deciding on a camera body to use for this build was pretty easy. I mean, the a7C was the obvious choice for this. But the lens on the other hand is a totally different story. I had kind of a hard time figuring out which lens I wanted to use. So historically, I've gone with something like this, like the 35 millimeter G Master lens, which is an amazing lens. It's probably my favorite lens of all time. But as you can tell, it's not very small, it's not very light, and it's not very discreet. So let me just show you really quick. So check this out. <laughs> this does not look right. The lens is bigger than the camera body. It just doesn't vibe like that Leica Q2. Like something that was designed from the ground up to be a beautiful all-in-one package. So I needed to look for something different. So for this build, I knew I wanted to prioritize size, weight, and of course performance of the lens. Now in my mind, it came down to two lenses. One was the 35 millimeter f 1.8 and the other was the 40 millimeter f 2.5 G lens. Now both of those are great lenses, but I ultimately decided to go with the 40 millimeter f 2.5 G lens. Now, the reason why I chose that lens is because of its 
lightweight, it's autofocus speed, it has the dual linear autofocus motors, it's sharpness, it's relatively fast aperture, and of course it's super small size. I mean, look how small and cute this thing is. It, um, it also has an aperture ring, which can be clicked or declicked, has the focus ring, and it has a button. So a lot more features as well. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you guys. I'll admit that one of the reasons why I went with this lens is because I really wanted to keep the aesthetics of the entire package intact. Now, if you remember the when I had the G Master lens on here, how funny that looked. But now look, with the 40 millimeter on this package, it just looks right and it, it feels like it was made for this camera, which it probably was. And this is a much more aesthetically pleasing lens and much more manageable and it travels a lot better as well. And honestly, at the end of the day, it turned out to be a pretty easy decision for me to make because I feel like the only few things that I slightly compromised on were one, focus breathing and two, the aperture size. Now for focus breathing, I didn't really care too much because I knew that this build was going to be a photography first build. And not to mention also that if I do want to use this lens for video, I've noticed that the newer Sony cameras that have focus breathing compensation, they include this lens on that list. So any future Sony cameras that I buy that I'm going to use for video most likely will support this lens with their focus breathing compensation. So the focus breathing was not a big deal for me. Now two, the aperture size, that one I did give a good amount of consideration to, but if you've looked at any of my street photography, you know that I like to incorporate a lot of the background and surroundings into the composition. So I'm not obliterating the background, right? I don't, I'm not just bokeh for days, right? So. I think 2.5 for me is plenty because I'm usually trying to get a lot of my scene in focus when I'm shooting street photography. Like I said before, I think these lenses were made specifically to use with the a7C and all of its successors because I think Sony really recognizes that people, certain people out there like me, really value lightweight, compact lenses that travel really well. Now I could have stopped right here with the build and I would have had a totally awesome street photography setup, but I wanted to add a few more small touches just to go that extra mile. So since we just talked about the lens, let's talk about the lens hood. Now I know lens hoods are not very exciting and some people don't even use them at all, but when you think about a Leica, like a Leica Q2, that squarish lens hood that they have is like a calling card. When you see that, you almost instantly know that that person is shooting with a Leica. Well, I wanted to have a little bit of that magic as well. So I went on Amazon and I found this company called Haug, Haug? I don't know how you pronounce it, but I'll make sure to drop a link to it down below in the description. But they make a squarish lens hood that's made for the 40 millimeter G lens. So let's check it out. So this is how the camera looks with no lens hood attached. Now, let's attach this guy. And bam, look at that. It gives you that really cool, iconic Leica look. And I'm loving it so far. The one downside is, is that I can't use my filters when this lens hood is on. So, I don't always use filters, I use them a lot but there will be times when I can use this lens hood and not worry about filters. And also, if you have the lens hood on, it does also have a cap. And by the way, all these pieces, the hood and the cap are all metal. The cap is felt lined, so it doesn't scratch up the lens hood. Very nice. Oh, and one other downside to this hood is that you can't take it off, turn it around and mount it back on the lens, but you can't do that with the stock Sony lens hood anyway, so I'm not really gonna ding this lens hood for that. Now just for comparison, these are the two lens hoods. This one is the stock Sony one, and this one is the Haug one. Now the Sony one actually is a little unique as well. It comes in uh, from the main diameter of the lens, which 
is not very typical for lenses. So I think it has a pretty cool, unique look as well. And also the cool thing about the Sony lenses, or the Sony lens hoods, is that once you mount it up, there are threads on the outside of the hood right here. So you can attach your, your filters while still using the lens hood. So if I need to use filters and a hood at the same time, I'm gonna use the stock Sony lens hood. Otherwise, you also have filters, filter threads on the lens itself. So if you don't need a hood, you can just mount your filters directly to the lens. Now, while we're on the subject of filters, I wanna say that I typically only use three different types of filters when I'm shooting street photography. One is an ND filter, because if I'm out in the middle of the day and I wanna get a little motion in some cars maybe, then I'll throw an ND filter on so that way I can drop my shutter speed down low enough to get that drag. Uh, two, I'll sometimes use a circular polarizer because when you're shooting street photography, a lot of times you'll get reflection off the buildings and windows and car windows. So if you wanna cut that down, you can use a circular polarizer. And probably my most used filter for street photography is a black pro mist filter. So that will give you that nice blooming effect when you're shooting like at night and you're shooting a nice neon sign, you get that nice glow around the, the lights. That's what the black pro mist filter is for. So um, I was really excited because around the time that I was thinking about making this video, um, KNF Concepts reached out to me and said, hey, would you like to try some of our products? And I went on their website and I was looking around and I think I found the perfect street photography filter setup. So check it out. This is the KNF magnetic lens filter attachment system. So what it is, is you have a ring and this ring is has magnets in it and you can screw it onto your filter threads like this. And as you can see, it's super, super, super low profile. You can't even tell that it's there when it's attached. So then the cool thing is, is now you can take any of the filters that they make for this system, I'm gonna slap the black pro mist filter on there and bam, that's it. It attaches in like a fraction of a second and you're ready to go. So I am super stoked about this setup because with my professional setup, I typically buy 82 millimeter filters and I buy step up rings for all of my lenses to adapt to that filter, but you don't really want that for this setup because it's gonna ruin the aesthetic with that big honking filter hanging out over here. And not to mention, it's just not very discreet. You're really gonna show people that, hey, I'm a professional photographer. If you're running around with this big filter thing on the front of your camera, this looks super discreet. No one's gonna think you're a professional if you're shooting with something like this. Now I did mention that um, one downside to the squared off lens hood is that it doesn't fit with these filters, which is kind of a bummer. I was kind of hoping that I could nestle these filters inside underneath the lens hood. That would be really sick. But unfortunately it does not work like that, but you can attach them to the outside of the stock Sony hood, which is actually pretty cool because it makes for a pretty stealthy looking setup. So check it out, let me show you. Again, here's what it looks like with the magnetic ring attached. You can't even tell it's there. And then you take the filter, bam, you attach it in just a fraction of a second. And the, another cool thing is that the lens cap is also magnetized so you can just slap it on there too and that is really cool this is a pretty discreet little setup here and it's pretty aesthetic I like it it's pretty awesome so um, I do want to say that KNF did send me this filter system for free um, but no money changed hands and I'm not obligated in any way to give them a good review 
So these are all my genuine opinions. I think it's really, really cool and super discreet. And this is definitely what I'm gonna be using for my street setup. I wanted to show you guys because this is really cool, really exciting for me. I think it definitely goes with the intent of this build for a nice, discreet, highly aesthetic setup. And it's super functional. So, pretty awesome. Thank you, KNF. And not to mention, just like any other product that has magnets in it, it is just so satisfying. Watch, just. All right. And what street photography camera build would be complete without a cool strap? So I found this company called Clever Supply Co. and they make vintage looking leather straps and they're super high quality. So check it out. This is the packaging that it comes in, this nice little canvas bag. And inside is the strap. The strap is, like I said, very high quality. It's full grain leather. And they use, let me reference just so I don't get it wrong. They use military grade waxed polycord thread to stitch it together, which I'm guessing is similar to um, paracord, which is extremely strong, has some kind of nylon component to it. So very strong, but the coolest thing is that these straps are peak design anchor compatible. So all my cameras have peak design anchors on them. So that is a really big plus in my opinion. Um, like I said, there's not much to say about this. It's a beautiful strap. You can buy it in all kinds of different lengths. They have a bunch of different configurations. This is not sponsored by the way. I did buy this strap with my own money. Uh, let me see if I can get the cool little logo here in the camera. There it is. Very cool. And I don't remember what color I picked. I think this is English tan, but I'll make sure to put that in the description down below. So anyway, let's just put this on and show you what the entire build looks like when we're all said and done here. right side on and got the left side look at that now that is what I call a Leica killer beautiful nice vintage looking strap we got a nice compact lens that looks like it was made for this camera we got the Leica lens hood Leica ish lens hood some of you guys are probably gonna call me a poser for putting this on there, but you know what? I don't care. I like it. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm gonna leave it on there for now. Again, I love the a7C, and there are rumors of an a7C Mark II coming out soon, so watch out for that. I'm probably most definitely gonna get that if the specs warrant it. I personally have never shot with a Leica Q2, um, but I still don't see a reason for buying a $6,000 point and shoot camera. Now I'm sorry for any like users, users out there who are watching this. I know that they're amazing cameras and that's why they've had the longevity that they've had. But at this point, they're just not for me, especially when I can get this kind of performance and these kind of aesthetics from a camera that's much cheaper. I just wanted to make this video to show some of you guys out there that you can get that Leica effect and not totally break the bank. Now I know this isn't exactly a cheap setup, but it is, it's way more attainable than say a Leica Q2. To close the video out, let me just run through a few numbers here just to give you a little perspective. All right. so. If you were to buy a Sony a7C body and all three of their compact G lenses, it would cost a little more than half the cost of a Leica Q2. Um, the build that I showed you today, so we're talking the body, the lens, the strap, and the filters. I don't think I included the cost of the hood, 
That will run you, so 1800 US for the body alone, 600 for the lens, 80 for the KNF magnetic adapter uh, set, and 120 for the strap. Now that's $2,600 US for the entire setup. So, but if you wanna compare apples to apples, because the Leica doesn't come with any of that stuff. So if you wanna compare apples to apples, it's $2,400 for the lens and the body versus $6,000 for the Q2, which you cannot remove the lens. Now, that means that the A7C setup is 60% less than the Q2, and that's not including things like the Leica batteries, which cost $285 per battery. So, you guys do the math. Like I said, I'm sure if you're a Leica user, I'm sure you love it, and I'm sure you get amazing images from it, but are they really that much better than what I can get with this? Uh, I don't think so. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, sorry I've been away for so long. I Unfortunately, YouTube is not my full-time gig. I do have a full-time job, and I started a new job, which is why I've been away. Um, I'm starting to get my feet under me at this new place, and you can expect more consistent content coming soon. For all my Leica fans out there who, I, who may have caught this video, don't hate me. I love you guys. Um, we're all big, one big community, one big family, and the most important thing is, is that you're out there, you're taking pictures, you're shooting video, whatever, having fun, and just loving this whole craft. So that's the most important thing. Um, if you like today's video, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps me out a lot. My name is Matt, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks. Bye.